All right, here we are for round one. Uh, our opponent is on the play and is keeping. This hand is okay. Uh, we basically, if we draw any, if we draw either a blue or green source, we can play a knuckle blade on three, and we have lightning strike to remove early opposing creatures. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. It's a little, you know, not. It's, it, it is a little speculative because we have to, you know, draw a land, but we're not gonna mulligan just, you know, based on that. So all right, perfect. We drew what we needed. Our opponent seems to be playing uh, Sedisi is my guess with an opulent, pal uh, opulent palace into Temple of Malady. So we'd like we'd love to draw a mana creature this turn, but we didn't. We do a dragon, which is not the worst, but not the best. So saying go here. Um, ho hopefully we can lightning strike something on our opponent's. As Ooh, actually our opponent is is this a four color deck? All right, this is interesting. We cannot lightning strike that unfortunately. Uh, hey, right on time. Seven so carries it. Um, just gonna play. I think I just want to play Knuckle Blade here. I want to get my my beat down on green, blue, and red. Opponent is drawing an Opulent Palace. So is this? I wonder if my opponent is playing something wacky like Chromanticore. Opulent Palace next to Plains is not something you see very frequently. I'm I'm, I'm really sort of wondering what's going on. We did see Brad Nelson's four color deck, uh, and then Flooded Strand. All right. Did you just lose all of our... What's going on? Where did all our stops go? Do I not have a stop in my own... Eh. I sort of really generally need to stop my upkeep, but I was confused. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and attack here. Really don't know what my opponent's up to. I'm just going to play another Knuckle Blade here. I could play like a carry hit and then oh, what you got? Is this I'm just tapping a note? All right. Well, my opponent has every color of mana. It looks like I can attack with both my guys. If he blocks one, I can pump. I'm down to thirteen. He's at twenty-one though. So I'm kind of taking a beating here. I'm just going to go ahead and play a Pelucranos. So I'm down to 12. A Hornet Queen. All right. Well, I guess I put it's playing some sort of... Okay. I, now, I, now I have it figured out. It's like an Abzan Sultai like, reanimator. It's basically... My guess is that it's Abzan reanimator splashing Sidisi um, from what I've seen so far now that we see a Hornet Queen. So my point is, a few men off from being able to actually cast Hornet Queen, thankfully. Sultai Charm with my Pelucranos. We're actually kind of kind of taking a beat down here. All right, so no attacks, and then my, my opponent can cast Hornet Queen next turn, which is not good for me. I'm gonna go ahead and attack with both my guys. I'm just gonna pump and try and kill the rhino. I could also let him keep rhino, pump this guy, put him to eight. I am gonna get a hornet queen next turn, which is unfortunate. Um, I feel like I just wanna do this. Oh God. So we don't really have, we're looking for Crater's Claws at this point. Ooh, maybe Lightning Strike good? This is too much. No, I, I basically need Crater's Claws to finish our opponent off through the Hornet Queen. So I think I put this in the bottom. We could also potentially kill our opponent with Stormworth Dragon Monstrous if he doesn't play a Whip. But he's definitely playing a Hornet Queen this turn. 
We know he has Len in his hand, so there's nothing that can stop him at this point. So there's the queen. It's actually kind of troublesome. There's a bivouac. Doesn't really do very much. So I can play a dragon. And say go. Oh god. That's that that basically kills me now, right? I have to like block, block, I take four, lose my Stormbirth Dragon. Pretty dead, I think. Have to block because otherwise Siege, <laughs> Siege Rhino kills me, which is kind of funny. And then I'm definitely losing at this point. Actually, no, hold on. Siege Rhino on top of his deck. I can theoretically. Eh, I'm just going to take the damage. There's no way I win this game if I block. This puts me to three. That's fine. So this way, if he like doesn't have Siege Rhino in his hand, I'm just playing a Siege Rhino or something here. Oh, are we just casting another Hornet Queen? Okay. Alright, now I'm super dead. Yeah, Hornet Queen, not an easy card to beat when you are uh, behind. And I was basically behind because I didn't have a mana creature, he was in the play, and he had Rhino into my guys. So, we're dead. Alright, so, sideboard-wise, um, we do have some good answers to Hornet Queen, thankfully. Um... So the the disdainful strokes are fantastic here, um, as is barrage of boulders. Chandra, I think, is actually a pretty good card here too. It can pick off hornets, can uh, get your creatures through. Stubborn denial, I think, is actually fairly weak. Um, I don't, there aren't that many uh, that many spells coming out of of the city seed decks generally, though. It might be good after cyborging if they have a bunch of removal. We're definitely taking out lightning strikes because lightning strike is fairly poor. It does kill Sidisi itself but otherwise isn't really great. Stormbreath's actually only okay here too, um, because you know they do have reasonable ways, they do have like, pretty good ways to actually stop you from getting through with stuff like uh, uh, Hornet Queen. I like Ash Cloud Phoenix a lot better because it's cheaper. I need to cut some more cards here. Maybe Chandra's not good enough. I'll we'll take out Chandra. And then you cut one more card. Maybe cut one more dragon. Maybe cut one stubborn denial. Probably cut one stubborn denial. Maybe I don't even want stubborn denial. All the things that my opponent played that game except for Soul Tide Charm were, were creatures. I think I'm gonna go with this. This seems pretty reasonable. Um, I still have you know a bit. I still have reasonable high end. Revelry could be good. My opponent clearly has whip. Yeah, revelry is actually probably just better than denial. I think I'm gonna go, gonna try this. It's possible this is wrong. Revelry kills uh, Corsair and also kills whip. The latter of which is clearly more important. Um, I, I, I don't know how good Stubborn Denial is. I didn't see how spell heavy my opponent's deck is. Uh, Disdainful Stroke can counter Murderous Cut, which is one of the most common removal spells that these type of decks use anyway. So it uh, sort of plays double duty there. So anyway, I'm going to try this out and see how it goes. I am keeping Creative Claws in because it kills. It can kill opposing Sidisis, which is good. Uh, it can also just finish opponents off, which is also quite valuable. So it's possible this should go, but I'm going to keep it like this for now because I do want to be able to kill Sidisi if it hits play. So here we go. We will play first. And this is a much better hand. Uh, we have actual mana acceleration, all of our colors. Bivouac. into Mystic. If we've done untapped land, we can actually cast Plukernos would be nice. 
If not, we still get to attack. Oh, we get Thoughtseize. Okay, so maybe we're not casting a Pollute Granos. I wonder if... Um, maybe I should actually not have taken out... Maybe I should have my third Storm Breath over the, the one Sarkhan. My opponent does have, uh, have Siege Rhino, which makes Storm Breath pretty valuable. Well, there goes Storm Breath, so my opponent does not want me to have it. It's also possible that just Crater's Claws was a mis leaving Crater's Claws isn't a mistake. I uh, just need more proactive stuff. Barrage of Boulders. Speaking of needing proactive stuff, the perfect card. <laughs> this is one of the unfortunate things about about tap lands. Um, I, I've definitely seen some some people say that suggest that you know. That you want to play like a bunch of temples in a deck like this, but this is exactly why I, I try to play not really a ton of tap lands because being able to actually cast your spells on time, you know, you're, you're even with their accelerator, not be able to cast your uh, your guys early is pretty unfortunate. All right, well we're definitely keeping a storm breath on top and playing a blue granos. And then next turn we plan to pl cast a blue granos. Or rather, cast a storm breath. If my opponent plays a Sadisi, I think I still cast it. All right, well, there's an absent charm. All right, well. Uh, need the actual red manas. There we go. Attack you. Please don't kill this. All right, you didn't kill it. Um, so he's pretty dead now, I think. I have a disdainful stroke. I guess you can potentially just kill this. It actually costs me, I have to pay four to, uh, to claws. I don't think I want to though. I think I actually just want to attack my opponent for four and hold up Disdainful Stroke. Hmm. Like, Curtis Claw's finish is, is, is a really nice finisher here. Especially with Barrage of Boulders in my hand to potentially even get that guy through. If he does have like a, a Sultai Charm to kill this, it would be kind of unfortunate. But we can protect from from Murderous Cut at least. Use all mana to, play, to boon Seder it. The feeling he's gonna try and kill it. Hopefully, it doesn't like murderous cut, and not cell touch arm. Bio blight. Okay. So now I can Boon Seder and then Barrage and kill him, assuming he doesn't do anything to gain life. And I also have Disdainful Stroke. Courser. I can still do what I want to do, so it's fine. And I can actually blow that up with Revelry, which actually does damage. So, I guess I just blow that up, or just disdainful stroke that, doesn't really matter, he's dead. So yeah, I cast this, 
green, green one, barrage. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just conceded. All right, so sideward wise, yeah, Crater's Claw seems kind of mediocre, and Stormbreath does seem very good. So I'm actually going to take, you yeah, know, put the Stormbreaths back in. I sort of overestimated the importance of uh, the relevance of uh, the Hornet Queens, I think. And I think that having the Disdainful Stroke Revelry Barrage plan is probably it's probably my best option here. Um, he has Bile Blight in his deck. Bile is pretty bad against me, but it does kill my mana creatures. Still don't think I want Stubborn Denial. I think that this is, you know, a, a reasonable setup against him. We have Barrage to get through Hornet Queen, Disdainful Stroke to counter his big threats, Destructive Reverie to kill Whip or whatever else, so here we go. This hand is fairly great. We're gonna keep, we're gonna ramp into a Phoenix. Phoenix is really powerful against a lot of these decks. Flying is very good, and it also is just, uh, resistant to removal, which is obviously pretty pretty sweet. So I'm gonna cast I'm gonna cast a Phoenix before I play Pelucranos. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to just set him up to you know, just be able to use a removal spell efficiently. Oh, Ashiok. Whoa. Okay. I was anticipating an Ashiok. I'm definitely playing Phoenix. This means that if he, ha he actually can't cast Abzan Charm with his lands right here, and he need to uh, he need to play an untapped, you know, untapped source of one of the colors. Um, so he can't even Abzan Charm this. He could he can Sultai Charm it theoretically. Got a Storm Breath on that. This is pretty powerful. What is he casting? Okay, well there's an Abzan Charm. All right, well I can play Storm Breath now and attack his guy. Attack Ashiok. Okay, so no Sultai Charm. Please. Doomwake Giant, okay. That's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and pack Ashiok. So I feel like I wanna just play Rattleclaw, even though he has this in play. Most of his stuff that, that can possibly kill my Rattleclaw, I suspect, um, will be something I can disdainful stroke, and I have two of those in my hand, so. If he has something like a whip or, or like another doom wake or something. It's it. Okay. All right. Well, Ashiok was really good there. Ashiok uh, put me in a really awkward position. So if he, I'm at 11, I'm gonna guess he's probably, ca oh, he's casting a carry to it, okay. Uh, all right, well, I'm just gonna bestow this on Stormbreath Dragon. Negate, all right. So I, I don't want him to be able to cast a uh, 
I still I'm just gonna attack with Storm Breath and then play um, play Pelucranos because I don't want him to like cast like a uh, a Hornet Queen or something. I want to hold up my Disdainful Strokes. Like his, the scariest thing he can do by far is Hornet Queen, and I have two ways to stop that right now. He's not winning this race, especially considering the Boon Seder in my hand. What is this? I'm going to Disdainful Stroke that I have a second one where that came from, so... Alright, then I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I can actually bestow my Boon Seder and leave up Disdainful Stroke. I'm going to tap my Mystic because I don't want him to... I mean, he has no cards in hand, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, and he's dead next turn, and I have Disdainful Stroke to basically stop anything. He could have like a, 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 a Sultai Charm to kill my Dragon, but otherwise he's just dead, I think. Uh, that costs too much mana, sorry. Kill you. So Disdainful Stroke came up huge here. It, you know, like the, the, the four Disdainful Strokes in the sideboard are incredibly powerful against any decks like this one that are built around, you know, big threats. And I was just able to, you know, stick a threat um, and use my uh, use my my counter magic to protect it. Boon Seder was actually excellent here. Um, it certainly it feels like it was a lot better than Cor uh, Corsair would have been. It you know enabled me to, to double my clock on my dragon, so my opponent had far fewer draws at outs. Uh, it, it baited in a gate, uh, which allowed me to just use my use my disdainful strokes. Like the 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 Sidisi was unlikely to actually do anything, um, but you know like given that I had, I had my opponent dead in two turns, the, the uh, you know, countering it meant that, uh, you know, my opponent literally had one more draw step that could be something, you know, to be something that was at all relevant and I had another Disdainful Stroke, so using it there felt right. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I definitely liked how the deck how the deck uh, ran in that that match. Um, Disdainful Stroke was incredible, and uh, Dragon was great. I mean, having having flyers, and this is the one thing that I mentioned during the uh, the deck tech video, uh, Boon Seder goes very, very well with evasive creatures. It allows you to uh, generate in a really, really fast clock that can take your opponent out, uh, and that's exactly what happened. So let's go on to the next match.